everybody. Welcome to Table Talk, a place for honest conversations and getting to meet friends. I'm Betsy Thompson, and I'm already laughing sitting with Cody Watucky. Hey, because... we are here around the table. I'm looking at Joel not having a clue what he's doing, which I'm sure is entertaining. If you don't know, Cody's our student pastor. And that's all I have to explain is say to explain the rest of this conversation. That's good. Yeah, I've never heard a table talk, but we're here talking what? at the table. This is, welcome. We're so glad you're here. This is going to be fun. Listen, Cody Watucky, he is our student pastor here at Sagemont. He does a phenomenal job. Hopefully, over the last few months, you've gotten to hear him preach on Sunday morning in big church. And uh, he does such an amazing job. If you haven't, go back, find those, watch those. Really, really excellent. Did a great message on salt and light recently. Go back and catch that. Um, He's not just a goofy student pastor. True. you, You have depth. Yeah, I try you to have really some You really do. Sometimes my sermon illustrations don't always work, but they got the picture on Sunday. Sorry, 11.15. 9.30 got it. So 9:30. if you're 9.30 service, you got it. Oh, yeah. We were really hoping it'd work both services. Yeah, it was If tough. you don't know what we're talking about, go back, even if you fast forward to the illustration. I also just it. want to give a word of encouragement to, um, I would say, all of my friends here at Sagemont that are 30 and under, the casual roasts that I got from you for the remainder of Sunday via text... <laughs> We're very encouraging. Thank you so much for being the body of Christ. That is hysterical. Yes. I was sure, because I was in 930 service, so I was sure that it worked, because it worked so well in 930. I thought for sure it'd work in 1115. Well. And it didn't. Yeah, it did not. sad days. (laughs) It's okay. The thought was there. It was, and it was really cool. Yeah, that's why I'm not a science teacher. There, That's probably True. wisdom. But you do, and that's one of the things I love. I think it's very interesting about most student pastors I've known in my lifetime. They have almost like these two wells that they drink from <laughs> this I can be a 12th I mean a 12 year old <laughs> and totally fit in and roll and do all this stuff yes. but also I can sit and have a theological conversation with you to the depths mm. of what the Lord has done in you and for you and somehow you merge them together in yeah, these beautiful too. ways and it is let me you all know this it is a gift mm. and um, it's been fun because ha- you've been at Sagemont almost 10 years Yep, coming up on 10 years. That's April what I thought. April will be 10 years. Which is crazy. I had more hair when I started here than I do now. That's true. But Jacob you... Jirasi actually told me that about a month ago on a Sunday morning. He said, Cody, I remember when you first became my student pastor, you had a lot more hair. Do you just but you just cut it now. Yeah. <laughs> We're going with you just cut it now. That's a, yeah, I appreciate that, Betsy. <laughs> it looks like it. Yeah. Um, but so almost 10 years, and I've just hit the 10-year mark myself, and so we started just a few months opposite of each other. Mm-hmm. Um, it has been so fun to watch you grow oh, in your ministry, you. to go from college intern college, Mm -hmm. you know, doing stuff with college to Mm -hmm. doing stuff with junior high and high school to then becoming the student pastor and to see you grow and you have put such purpose and effort into it. It Didn't just happen. Um, You've done a really excellent job. Thank you. It's been fun to watch. It's been fun. It's been a wild ride. Like, I feel like I've done a lot of things, you know, since coming here. Yes. um, Yeah. God's moved and I'm super grateful for that. Yeah. And ready to see what happens. Yeah. And I will say, if you know me, I'm extremely biased because my kids have been in Cody's ministry and they've, and so I have gotten an inside track, not just working alongside you, but as a parent, Mm. getting to see the benefits of what y'all do in student ministry um, with my personal children. Mm. So, and you know, I've got twins that are seniors Mm -hmm. and they adore you and Carlin so much. Hi guys, how are you doing today? <laughs> they think y'all are just yeah. well, top, we love them. top tier, you know, so you do a really, really good job. So, okay, you've been at Sagemont almost 10 years in a couple mm-hmm. months, uh, married to Carlin. Yes, How Carlin. long have you been married to Carlin? 10 years. That's what I thought. So, uh, yeah, we were um, six months into marriage when I started here at Sagemont. Okay. I vividly remember when I met Carlin. Okay. Like I vividly remember I hear when I met Carlin. We were at a Baptisms at the Cross. 
Oh. Out at the cross. So it had to be June, right? We usually don't start those till like June. 112 degrees. So then you had started in April. So it had been a, been a hot a second, while. right? And we were out there and you and I were chatting. There was a group of us and she walked up and you said, this is my wife, Carlin. And I said, you're married? <laughs> <laughs> and she looked at me yeah. she goes, Yes, he's married. If you know Carlin, you hear her. Yes, he's married. You looked like you were 18. I was 22. There you go. I was a fresh 22 years old. Yeah. And yeah, Carla and I got married 10 days after my 22nd birthday. So cool. Mm-hmm. She's the sweetest. We yeah, love she's Carla. A good one. She has a great heart for ministry too. Yeah. Um, and so now y'all have two kids. Two kiddos. Sweet little Lily. Sweet who's Lily. not little anymore. Like no, she's, she's a like f- a kid. She's a first grader. Yes. So she's almost um, seven. She'll be seven at the end of this month. And she thinks she's already in student ministry. And well, obviously, she's grown up in it. <laughs> whoever her future student pastors are, I pray for them. <laughs> it's um, probably you. <laughs> <laughs> I pray for them fervently because they're going to they're gonna have a fun job on yes. their hands. Yep. She's a blast. Yeah. She's let a me, and let me tell you, one of the greatest honors probably in most of my life was when Lily was in play school <laughs> and it was dress up. I don't even know. Community was helper community day. Community helper day, like dress up as a... She dressed up as me. <laughs> yeah. Like she legit, dressed up as Betsy. Oh my gosh, it was the sweetest, cutest thing you could have ever yeah. seen this tiny little person. It made my whole heart yeah. leap. She's just the cutest. That was adorable. She's a good one. And then sweet Asa. Yeah, we have little Asa, man. Just turned one. Just turned one. Uh, babbling. So cute. Uh, doesn't really have that much of a desire to walk right now because he can move on land like a cheetah. <laughs> It's a true story. Yes. So, yeah, uh, life's a little bit busier now with two kids. Absolutely. And figuring out that rhythm still, but we got a pretty good grasp on it. Yeah, they're yeah. adorable. When you put a beanie on him. I know. It's the cutest. Well, he actually got his first uh, s- church reached out to him yesterday after seeing that picture with the beanie on him yeah. as a part-time youth worship leader. <laughs> And so Grant is actively discipling him now to prepare him <laughs> prepare for his him first for- role. <laughs> Looks, I told the church he he's looks a little real young. Cute. He's not walking. <laughs> yeah, I think he's doing connection team stuff right oh now. Oh my gosh, well, he's adorable. I got to talk to Michelle about it. Right, get him plugged in. Mm-hmm. Get him, get him going. He's super adorable. You have a precious family, and uh, y'all love this church well. We're very thankful that y'all are here. We're glad to be here. So one of the big things I wanted you to come chat with me about one again because I've seen this in my kids' life and I think it's really cool <laughs> and I wanted you to share just kind of the heart behind it so the church at large knows what y'all are doing in student ministry. Y'all started a, is it a curriculum mm-hmm. it has it's a lot more than just a curriculum but it's a curriculum and it really y'all have been walking through spiritual disciplines right what they are why they're important how you do them and mm-hmm. so explain a little bit about what the curriculum is and just mm-hmm. why y'all picked that yeah so at the beginning of the school year we started a curriculum uh, by a pastor named john mark comer he's also an author he wrote a couple different books the ruthless elimination of hurry is one of his really really popular ones but um, they began a curriculum called practicing the way Mm -hmm. and so that whole curriculum is about different spiritual disciplines um, that jesus modeled Um, that the disciples also did and that Jesus told us as his followers, hey, these are things that you should be doing. Um, Some of these disciplines um, aren't in, I would say, the Western church's normal rhythms. Um, These are things like Sabbath and fasting and um, the, the bigger ones like prayer, Um, And then we're getting ready to, we just launched on Sunday, solitude and what that means um, for our students. And so we've kind of noticed in the most loving way I can say, like certain deficiencies Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to spiritual disciplines. Like we tend to focus on, hey, are you in your Bible, which is vitally important? Are you in community? Also important. Are you in worship? Also important. Um, But there's some things, too, that we have to practice Mm -hmm. and we have to grow in when nobody else is watching except for Christ. Yep. And so um, it's been really cool. Um, I'll I'll give her a lot of credit as well. This was one thing that Haley um, put before us. as in, you know, newcomer to the team and said, what if we did this? 
and immediately I was like, I love this. Yeah. Um, because kind of adding on to that, what we've been doing on Wednesday nights with our crew, at least in the fall, uh, we were walking through a thing called Commands of Christ. And once again, it was different commands that Jesus gave his followers that we need to be obedient in. And so if you understand kind of how student ministry works, um, it's a lot of throwing noodles at the wall and seeing what sticks mm -hmm. to help them remember. But it's been really cool to see students from sixth grade to 12th grade begin to practice some of these things. And it has also been interesting to get pushback, not only from students, but from parents on some of the practices mm. and what we've heard, like, well, we can't do that mm. because we've got X, Y, and Z. And it just kind of shows sometimes yeah. in love where we can put things above pursuing Jesus without sounding uh, pharisaical. Um, it will help our kids kind of get a idea of, man, maybe I should look to Jesus and try to get in his word more than I'm a little bit worried about baseball practice this mm -hmm. afternoon or, you know, the casual battles that student pastors fight every year that we kind of have to be silent about. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I think one of the really cool things about it is it's not just Sunday and Wednesday. Right. Like they ha there's an app, there's different mm -hmm. things that they've been listening. The kids have access to and y'all are encouraging them, them to do on a daily basis, not just Sunday and Wednesday, which yeah. I think that's huge. Yeah, it's it's been really great. Um, our 12th graders have ran with a lot of it. Obviously, they're, you know, the leaders mm -hmm. by age. And so when we were talking about fasting, I mean, fasting is not a normal thing, yeah. I would think, for most Americans, because food is so obviously readily accessible. And you can go through Chipotle. Some Chipotles <laughs> even have drive throughs now. It's amazing. Do they really? Yeah, one in Friendswood. It's called a Chipotle shout out. What? Like you can order it? You order ahead on the app and you drive through okay, the Okay, so still, see, okay. See, that's not a drive through to me. Uh, that's a pickup window. Well, because the first time I ever, listen, the first time I ever went to Chipotle, because somebody talks about it all the time. So I was like, what's the deal? I should probably go try this out. <laughs> I just drive up to the window thinking I can order. Oh, well. And I drove away. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Because now I figured it out now. But so when you said drive through, I was like, seriously, you can like, no, you it's order still ahead. just a pickup window. You got to order ahead so you get your rewards. See, okay, in our family, there's one child that has the app, and she's the one that orders for all of us. Even if we're not with her, we text her and say, you have the app go on and order. So then she gets got a free burrito and I got a free that it works. You got, yeah, you got to spend a good amount of money. Chipotle should work on that, but <laughs> whatever. But yes, fasting. We right? digress. Yeah. <laughs> So fasting is just not one that we normally do. And so there's quite a yeah. few small groups. I don't know if y'all know this, but on Sunday morning and Wednesday nights, student ministry, we do small groups um, after, you know, our messages. We kind of split it up to where junior high gets to hear from the staff. Our high school students hear basically directly from uh, their leaders. And that's by design. We want our high schoolers to understand what it looks like to be in the word and then also not have a service before going to service mm -hmm. to kind of keep it fresh for them. And so um, a lot of these groups, when we started talking about fasting and Sabbath, they started doing it. And what was interesting for us on our side was um, the students that were like, man, that was a lot easier than I thought it was mm -hmm. going to be. You know, like Carlin and Ashley Leslie, they lead together. And so a lot of girls in their group did the fast together. We had guys groups that were doing it. Um, we had guys groups that were practicing Sabbath together. Like, what does it look like mm -hmm. to just intentionally stop? Yeah. Like, I'm terrible at Sabbath. Um, it sounds lovely, right? Like, when you think it, you're like, a whole day of just... <laughs> getting to stop, but then it is very hard to actually put into practice. Yeah, it is. And it's like, you have to, in order to do it and as best as you can with two kids, right? Like, yeah. but Carlin and I were basing our week off of what do we need to do Sunday to Thursday or Sunday to Friday so that Saturday is a true Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What do yeah. we have to say no to? What things do we have to get done around the house? Um, 
what errands do we need to think of and get done beforehand? Mm -hmm. Like it takes a lot of intentionality, but I think that's with anything as far as the discipline goes, you have to be intentional. It's not just going to fall in your lap. Like you're not going to wake up and open up your Bible before you open up your phone. You know, mm-hmm. um, you have to be. Well, and I think what's so things. interesting is even you talk about Sabbath or fasting or really any prayer, reading your Bible, any of the disciplines. It's one thing for somebody to say you should do this. Right. It's totally different for them to say this is how you do this mm-hmm. or this is a way to get started in doing it. Mm-hmm. Because even with Sabbath, a lot of times people are like, so I just sit at home and do nothing all day. <laughs> What? It, right. How do I do that? And you're like, no, that's not what it is. Right. But then people go, so what is it? And yes. so that is, I think, what's so cool about what y'all have been doing is not just telling the students, hey, Sabbath, hey, fast, hey, find solitude, hey, read the Bible. Right. It's a, hey, we're supposed to do this. Here Here's are tools do. for you to know how to actually mm-hmm. act them out. Yeah, I think that was a cool thing, too, because there are a couple of weeks in the Sabbath one. There was one week where I filled in. One of our leaders was out and I sat in with eighth grade guys group. Shout out to Jay High. Love you. He does. Love um, and we were talking through Sabbath. And so they were asking the questions that I'm sure some some of the parents were asking, too. Like if they don't if they've never practiced Sabbath before, things like. Um, so what do we do? Do we just mm-hmm. like is this kind of like a get out of jail free card to be lazy for a day? Right. And it's like, no, it's, you know, time for you to spend time with him. Right. And I know we come to church on Sundays and all that, but we have normal rhythms on Sunday, too, just like any other day of the week. I mean, for us, it's the Monday of the work week. It is. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, things where you can, like, go outside and take a walk. Because you freed yourself up to walk outside for 45 minutes if you want to Mm -hmm. and pray or listen to music you enjoy that points you to Jesus. Like the reality of all these things is if you're practicing Sabbath, you're doing things that align your heart and your mind with him. Mm -hmm. Same thing with fasting. You know, we taught the kids like, okay, a couple different things, right? When it comes to fasting, there's a big thing in culture right now where they're like, hey, I'm going to fast from social media. Right. And we're like, Hey, that's great. That's a good discipline. It's abstaining. It's not actually fasting. Mm -hmm. So a biblical fast is you're not eating food. Right. And so we would tell them, Hey, when you're not eating food, what are some things that you can do to help you get your mind off the fact of I'm normally eating at this time, open up your word, prayer, get on FaceTime with a friend Mm -hmm. and talk about you know, something that you're walking through right now, all those sort of things um, help. But I think this it's been really cool to kind of like, I guess, pilot it um, in our ministry just because it's shown us some areas where like, OK, we need to keep fanning the flame mm-hmm. here. And um, these are things that maybe we need to have discussions with parents on. Mm -hmm. Our ministry got the most pushback. I thought it was going to be on fasting, but it was on Sabbath. Yeah. We got the most pushback on Sabbath that I thought was really unique and not rude or anything at all. But it was just like kids would be like, my dad, my mom said, I can't Sabbath. Like, you don't just get to sit around. And I said, well, remember, Sabbath isn't just sitting around. Mm -hmm. But I also know, like, obviously being around our kids a lot, how busy their schedules are. Um, Like, I was talking with a student the other day. It was their first week back from school. And they had 15 assignments due for that week. And in a way, I'm like, what is happening? Yeah. You know, and so for them to be able to have this time to to clear their mind and to have Sabbath without their phones yeah. or without their console, like go outside, yeah. breathe fresh air, students like it's good for you. Right. Meet up with some friends, go have lunch, go have dinner, go have breakfast, go invade Waffle House, do whatever you guys want to do. Like it's good for them. And I think what's so interesting is, you know, if parents are going, hey, we can't do that, then, you know, we've got a generation of adults that aren't doing Exactly. Spiritual disciplines. Exactly. Now, granted, the one of the cool things about Sagemont Student Ministry is y'all have a lot <laughs> of kids come who, whose parents aren't believers. Right. And they're the first believer in their family. And that's a cool thing because you get to see them make an impact in their family. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, we listen, 
Sabbath fat disciplines are called disciplines for a reason. Mm-hmm. They are difficult to do. And so as parents, it's a thing we have to, I mean, as adults, we're having to learn how to practice these disciplines as well. Yep. I mean, that's how it was for me, you know, believer in my family, didn't know the disciplines, um, you know, and so I had to, my youth pastor kind of spurred me on. I remember the first time I fasted was my senior year of high school. And uh, we had this like event or like a lock-in type of thing. And uh, I remember fasting at the time I was like really, really into weightlifting. And so I was hungry (laughs) and I protested a little bit and wanted to get in my car and go to Chipotle on Fairmont Parkway. And uh, my youth pastor, Nathan, uh, salt of the earth, he was just like, you're going to sit here and you're going to do this with the rest of your crew. And at the end of this fast, we're going to eat cheap nachos with everybody else. And I was like, praise God. There you go. You know, so sometimes we just need those people that can spur us on and help us to be intentional in those things, because anything that right requires us to grow, it's not easy, but it's something we should do it's and it's worth it yep Yep. obedience is hugely beneficial and hard but hugely beneficial yeah and i just think too like i've been really proud of our students that you know have started to try i mean the Mm -hmm. biggest thing is like just go swing the bat you're not going to hit everything out of the park but just go swing it yeah um because even at our high school retreat we, we knew we were getting ready to talk about solitude. And so when we went to high school retreat, we told the kids like, hey, we're not bringing a speaker, but guess what? We have the word and the word of God yeah. speaks for itself. And so yeah. we're going to read the word and we're going to talk about what we read in small groups. And I was surprised by how many kids at the end of that retreat were like, we need to do this every year. Mm-hmm. You know, because the typical model for a student ministry event is bring in the speaker, you know, uh, somebody from the outside in, super galvanizing. And this time we were just like, we're just going to let the Lord speak through his word. And it was really cool, the conversations that the students were having and then setting them up in a way where they could have that solitude out at the retreat um, was really, really good. Yeah, I loved that so much when y'all did that at the retreat. It was one of the things I wanted us to talk about because I think it's so Awesome, because you're not only telling the kids, hey, you need to spend time in God's word. You will hear from the Lord through his word. Mm -hmm. But you said, hey, now go do it. Mm -hmm. And then let's talk through it. Okay, now go do it again. Now let's talk through it so that they do start to feel this rhythm of I can't open God's word on my own. And he will show me and he will speak to me through his word. Because you talk about a student retreat, you get a speaker, you've got a worship. That's what we do every single Sunday. I mean, it's what we do. You yep. know, we right. walk into a connect group and there's a speaker. Yep. We walk into big church and there's the pastor telling us what they are getting out of scripture, which is hugely encouraging and fabulous and wonderful and all the things. Right. But so often, if that's the only way we ever get into God's word, we are missing the huge point of God yep. saying, get to know me. Yep. And I love that y'all took time to say, we aren't just going to tell you to do this. We're going to give you opportunity to do it. And man, it's one of those sitting here. I'm like, how cool would it be for a connect group of adults to say, hey, today they we're not teaching. You're going to just read this scripture mm. by yourself for 20, 30 minutes. And then we're going to discuss what the Lord showed you. I'm like, that's cool. That's a neat thing to yep. start giving people that muscle. It's a really cool thing. Stuart and I, a couple of weeks ago, we ran into each other in the hallway. And it was, I think it was last week maybe last Tuesday. And so we were talking about the Sunday coming up Mm -hmm. and uh, we just were talking for a minute. And I was like, man, what would it look like if one Sunday, whoever was preaching just opened up the Bible and we just read a chapter of the Bible together, you know? Yes. Like kind of like the early church when they were like, Hey guys, we're the Thessalonians. We just got this letter from Paul. I'm going to read it. Yep. And uh, so we were just like, wow, that'd be really fun. Um, But it was really encouraging to see that at the retreat, Mm -hmm. see the students do it. Because, yeah, that was our goal for them to be like, for them to see God speaks through his word. And, you know, if I get into his word and I seek him, because we would say, you've got 45 minutes. We want you off by yourself. At the end of the 45 minutes, you'll get together with your small group. And I want you guys to talk about what God showed you when you were in the 45 Mm -hmm. minutes. 
And uh, it was extremely fruitful. Absolutely. Yep. I love it so much. And also because of getting back in a group, some kids are going <clears> to <throat> say, I read four chapters. And some kids are going to say, I read two verses. Right. And God's speaking either of those ways. And yep. so then it's encouraging to go, okay, there's not like this way that you do it. It's getting in there with the Lord and going, Lord, show me yourself through this time with you. And I think, yeah, one of the things that's been encouraging, like Carlin actually encouraged me to do this too. Because obviously a lot of times when I'm in the word here, I'm studying. Yes. You know, and so she was just like, what if we just started reading the word to read it? Just to read it, yeah. not to dissect everything yep. or Prep for look something at the Greek, or, you know yep. what I mean? But just to read the word. Mm -hmm. And so that's something we've been doing just to <clears throat> help us remember. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's been encouraging. I love that. But I also think like one of the, I saw this this morning, so this is not original to me, but Shane Pruitt posted it and he was just like, if kids can learn biochemistry mm -hmm. and calculus and um, physics and all these different things that we teach them in high school, they can learn the disciplines. Amen. And like, we don't have to simplify it for them. We can actually call them up. And so that's what we try to do. Yeah. And I know sometimes like probably with, they still love us, but our students probably get slightly annoyed with us. Cause it's like, hey guys, like we love you, but we're not gonna spoon feed you. We're gonna call you up. And we, we want to make the kids as best as we can, I mean, sharp arrows yeah. so that wherever they go after they um, graduate out, I mean, they're ready. Yeah. Um, they're ready for the culture. They're ready to be a light, you know, and they also know their foundation. And so that's the mm -hmm. biggest thing. Yeah. So I love that. And one of the things you said when you were preaching this last time um, was about a conversation with Lily. Mm. And I've thought about it multiple times because uh, you do FCA mm -hmm. at Thompson on Thursday mornings, Thompson Intermediate School. And Lily said, why do you keep going back? You shared the gospel with them. Why do you keep going back every mm -hmm. week? And I thought it was so cool that you were able to look at her and go, did you get it the first time mm -hmm. you heard it? And I was like, for each one of us to go, listen, we have to keep yep. this. Is, listen, the Christian life isn't a, uh, you're, you're done. Salvation, praise the Lord is, but the sanctification process that we walk through and doing that with other people. And so I love that y'all are like, okay, we talked about fasting. We don't have to talk about that anymore. You know, to be able to go, no, these are disciplines for a reason and a purpose. We have to keep building them right. to get to where they are natural rhythms. And then here's the crazy thing that as adults, we know this. I can have a really good rhythm for a year or two. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I used to do that really naturally and I have not done it yep. in forever. And so it's just one of these things that we, God, I, he, I know he designed it exactly this way because he's like, because you need me. Yes. Do this with me and continually come back to me. So I love that y'all are purposing to continue working on these. Yeah. It helps you understand your dependence. Yes. Because the whole thing about these disciplines, it was never, even when Jesus was doing them, it was never to like check a list right. or, you know, show the Pharisees up. I mean, he did casually because he was God. Yep. But it's to have intimacy with God. Yes. So you saw Jesus do all of these things to set the bar, but to have intimacy with his father. And so we're telling the kids yeah. like, hey, you're doing all these things, not just to say you're doing them, yep. like don't fast and go disfigure your face so that everybody knows I haven't eaten in 18 hours and I'm right. hungry, but to be close with God, to, right. to hear his voice. And, you know, culture is so loud today, like, over the week after Christmas, Carlin and I, um, we did like a no social media. So we both set up passcodes on each other's phones that we only knew. And we were like, we're not going to get on social media just for a week. And right. so we did it till New Year's Day. And I struggled a little bit. Yeah. And being honest, I didn't do as good as I should have because I replaced screen time with social media with other things. Yeah. And so I was like, man, I've got to, I've got to get this figured out. Um, you know, cause I went from social media to like, Oh, I found this game or, Oh, I'm look mm -hmm. reading this thing. Yeah. And so got to be intentional. Yes. Um, otherwise we'll just, I think about something Zach Nicholson said, 
um, a long time ago in a staff meeting, but he was like, if you're not being intentional to make moves, all you're doing is maintaining. Yep. And so for us in, in life, we have to be intentional to grow. Otherwise, all we're going to do is talk about it and stay in the same place. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Yeah. And so often, a lot of times we're not staying in the same place. We're going backwards. Very true. It happens it's real fast. Slow, yeah, the slow yeah, drift, absolutely. right? You don't have the anchor. Yep. You started here, and the next thing you know, you're up against the rocks. Yep. yep. I heard one, one person one time talking <clears throat> about riding a bicycle up a hill. And as soon as you stop pedaling, you don't just stay where you are. You start drifting backwards. And so if you are not purposely That's pedaling good. and going, it make, I mean, it happens before we know it. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I'm not trying to go down a hill backwards. Me either. Terrifying. No, thank you. I used to be a skate park kid growing up in Laporte. That's all we had. Sylvan Beach. But you didn't bring your bike Gosh, to the Sylvan skate park. Sylvan Beach. That was like recesses of my mind. That's crazy. Sylvan Beach skate there park. You go. There you wow. go. I didn't ever go to the skate park, but I remember Sylvan Beach. Yeah, it was slightly terrifying. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. But um, so I think it's so cool that y'all are doing what you're doing in student ministry because here's the deal. Students are in student ministry just for seven years because it's seven six years through 12. total. Seven mm -hmm. years. It goes super quick and mm -hmm. they're out and y'all have this season with them that y'all can be so purposeful with them. And I love that y'all are extremely evangelistic. You are wanting people, kids to come to know the Lord. Like that's top priority. Have a relationship with the Lord. But then y'all have really been purposeful with, okay, you now you know the Lord. Mm -hmm. There is more to it. It's not just... Come right. to know the Lord, most important thing. But then, like, let's build on I love what you said. Get them as sharp as they possibly can be mm -hmm. before they go out. Yeah. I love that. so important. Like, I think of uh, the girls' grade. Like, this senior Sunday is going to be tough. It's going to be tough for me. Oh, same. It's like, I've joked yeah. with them, and I've told them. And now that Levi's here, Levi, well, we may have to talk about this. <laughs> I've joked about needing uh, 30 minutes to do individual highlight reels for each one of the mm. kids. But like, I, I think that these grades right now that are in here, not yeah. the previous ones have not, because I've seen them do it too. Yeah. But like, it's starting to stick. Yes. Like after all these years, yes. it's starting to stick. And so I'm like, go. Like, yes, we're going to miss you. But yes, you have Sagemont U when you come home or if you're staying, you have it. But it's like, just go. Go yeah. be a light. Um, like there's so many of our kids that I know, they may not believe it yet, but I already believe in them. One of the biggest things that I remember my youth pastor looked at me when I was 20-ish years old. I was already out. <clears throat> he had moved back to Louisiana with his family. And uh, one conversation I had when I was juggling the call to ministry, he just looked at me and said, Cody, you're going to do like way cooler things for the Lord than I ever did. Mm. Way bigger things. And when he said mm. that, I didn't believe it. But as I began to process the call, I was like, man, that means a lot. Yeah. And I did believe it. And so same thing for the kids is like, guys, you know, Miguel, Daniel, Haley, and I, we're not always going to be around. Right. Like you guys can go out and you're going to do amazing things and big yeah. things as you guys figure out what it looks like to pursue Jesus. Yep. And, um, you know, we talk about discipleship over entertainment all the time because yep. in student ministry, a lot of times I feel like the outside pressure is to entertain, mm -hmm. have the biggest, best, yeah. Most hipster speaker, whatever, you know, and it's like, no, we just want to make followers of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do a look, couple things against the grain of what's standard for student ministry, because in a lot of ways, sometimes the standard isn't producing disciples. It's yeah. producing gatherings. Yeah. Well, and I will. And I told you this in August, whenever we did the backpack drive and pickup, um, Having my older girls be in student ministry, you know, the whole time. So I've got to kind of see the process of what y'all as a staff, you, because you've been the consistent one in um, leading, have been so purposeful in training the kids to do that now you get to see them do doing do the thing, mm -hmm. not you trying to convince them or like you doing the thing while they watch you do the thing, but like they're doing it is just so cool in the endurance race mm 
mm-hmm. that you are running in student ministry. Yeah. And I hope you stop and look at the fruit of your labors of what you've done. That was such a cool day. Like um, multiple kids, you know, praying with the community. Uh, yeah, I mean, just strangers and saying, hey, can I pray with you? How can I pray? And doing it right there. I mean. Yeah. Uh, we were so, so proud of them. It was amazing. And it kind of showed them, too, like, well, this isn't as hard as I thought right. it was. Yep. I mean, I had a seventh grader. His name is John Mark, you know, and he was nervous. And he immediately was just like, I'm going to do it. And then we were like, hey, we'll pair you up with somebody. And he just started taking people solo and just talking to them. How's your day going? How can I pray for you? Stop and pray for people. And he's 12, mm-hmm. 12 yeah. years old, you know? And so yeah. that was an encouragement, but Huge. it is cool. Cause a lot of times in student ministry, you'll leave on a Wednesday night. It's always seems to be Wednesday nights in particular. And w- the staff, like there's been weeks where I've been like, is anything we <laughs> are doing making a difference? Sure. Cause sometimes students, as much as they love you, they can be absolutely brutal. Yep. Um, you know, as far as like, well, I don't care. Or they'll look you straight in the face and they're like, I don't want to be here. My mom makes me come. My mom made me come. Why is it always the mom? My mom made me come. That's a great question. (laughs) Why Why is it always the mom? Why is it the moms? That's a great question. And so anyways, it's good to see those, those things and them do it because we're seeing all over the place, like our upperclassmen leading out Wednesday groups, Mm -hmm. you know, and then even when we do these like things in their mind now that are like, um, student ministry staples like our junior high events Mm -hmm. and our high schoolers are like hey i need to come lead at this like we did brotherhood lock in our it was the biggest one we had this past year It was a hundred a hundred people at junior high brotherhood lockdown (laughs) and i love this event i live for it okay and the rest of us just go what and our kids love it so we're going we're taking the kids to the movie theater i have in my car on the way to the movie theater three of our high school leaders alton parker luke hadfield aka corn world and stanley burns (laughs) stanley burns in my passenger seat stanley burns jr looks at me and says hey cody when are you going to retire from student ministry? Hmm. And Alton immediately says, well, what are you talking about, (laughs) Stanley? Like, what do you really want to tell Cody? He goes, well, you're kind of old now. Oh, my God. (laughs) You're kind of old and, you know, like, and I was like, well, Stanley, I'll retire from student ministry when God tells me to. And he's like, all right. I mean, I just, you know, wanted to ask. Oh, got to love Stanley Burns. So I'm, anyways, parents, that's what we're up against over here. Stanley, I love you. Um, but I, I won't I won't forget that one for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just one of those things where to see them kind of get it. And even those three yeah. boys, like they were there for the first brotherhood. Yep. So they were like, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to do this. And they do yep. a great job. They do. And so yeah. it's a good encouragement, like for any age group to just remember, like, oh, 90 percent of people would love a discipleship relationship or a mentor, Yep. but they don't want to ask for it. Yep. And they've never experienced it. So they're, you know, they're uneasy about it, um, but it's beneficial. Yeah. And so like, I know yesterday the circumstances were hard, but just for me to be in the same room as Zach, somebody that's poured into me predominantly and to hear him open up the word, even in a hard circumstance was good for my soul. Me too. Like I I left that room encouraged. Yes. To pray for the family, continue to walk with them Yeah, and all of those things, but also encouraged to have heard my friend open up the word and, and preach. Yep. And so, yeah. Yeah. Those kind of relationships are awesome and important. And again, mm-hmm. it goes back to making time. They Being aren't just going to happen. Mm-hmm. Be intentional and make time for that stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, I will tell all of y'all, if you see Cody or any of the student staffs in the hallway, tell them thank you. Take them to, ch- are you the only one that is crazy about Chipotle? I mean, I know you're the only one that's crazy about it, but the others would go. I kind of coerce the team a lot of times. If you want to bless the student ministry, take them to Chipotle or just bring it to them so they don't have to go anywhere. 
It's not the worst thing ever. Um, but they are doing such a good job. Y'all be praying for them. They've got all their stuff is kicking off. Journey's coming up in January. If you haven't signed your kids up, sign them up. It's hugely important for the, it's such a great way for your kids to get plugged in quickly, mm -hmm, really, sure. really fast. Also, um, if you want to be a host home, still needing some host homes. A yep. few, if you're willing to host some kids in your house, reach out to student ministry. They would love that. And then breakaway for junior high coming up in the summer camps mm -hmm. coming up in the summer all the school things all this stuff just it's kicking off and so yep never slows down no be praying for student ministry they do an amazing job it and i will say this as well if you have students that look at you and say i don't want to go reach out to them let them partner with you in um, how they can help that transition, how they can help with that. Mm. They're really good at that um, because I would say it's one of the most important places for your students to be um, is in a student ministry. And hey, listen, if it's not Sagemont, find a place. They need community. They need yep. accountability. They need that. Um, but reach out to these guys and girls they would love to help you get your kids involved and they know how to work with kids that don't love being there <laughs> and now you can go but now they love being there it just it is cool to see that change yeah yep and we know it listen sagemont's a big place we get it it's yep. a whole deal they understand what they're asking kids to walk into so they know how to talk to them mm -hmm. so please reach out to them be praying for them thanks for coming and spending time thanks for having me it was great to S listen to the table Talk to the table. Man, if this table ever talks. <laughs> Cody's going to be the one to tell us. <laughs> Maybe Miguel and I one here will sneak in one time and we'll see if it talks when the camera's not on. But we'll Listen, have a camera on. It would be so funny. And now it would be ruined. But if y'all like put like a speaker under the table <laughs> and one day it just started talking. Uh, I shouldn't have said it on camera because then we could have done it. it now I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been fun. But, hey, I appreciate you. Thanks for having so me. So much that you're doing here at our church from a mom. Thank you for what you're doing for my kids. And thanks for just spending time with us and preaching. Love getting to hear you preach, Cody. That's it's good. super, super good. Y'all, thanks for hanging out with us today. We will see you next time on Table Talk. <laughs>